好，二零一九年第十条题目系有关于蒸腾作用嘅。咁先睇返呢幅图啦，就係、是、某一棵嘅植物喺呢廿四小时入面呢，佢哋嘅蒸腾作用嘅速率嘅变化，同埋径步直径嘅变化。咁啊，两边嘅 y s s 都要睇一睇啦。实线嘅呢一条线呢，就係、是、蒸腾嘅速率，咁啊跌升跌。而另一邊嘅 y s 就係虛線嘅，就係、是、徑步嘅直徑，就係、是、升跌升。咁啊，基本概念先啦，就要我哋去描述一下蒸騰嘅速率同埋徑步嘅直徑之間嘅關係啦。Part A 咧就係考翻我哋啦，點樣去閱讀個圖表啦。而今次我哋要觀察嘅咧，就係一個曲線嘅延時效應。而啦，就幫我哋去得出翻蒸騰嘅速率同埋徑步嘅直徑咧。又有冇一個因果嘅關係？既然係關係啊嘛，阿 A 同阿 B 咩關係啊？可能係因果關係。今次我哋喺幅圖度睇到一個延時嘅效應，我哋就要去觀察下，究竟邊一個因素係改變先啦，同埋邊個因素係緊隨其後而改變呢？咁我哋睇翻幅圖咧，我哋就會知道噶啦。原來咧係個蒸騰嘅速率跌到落底先嘅，就即係話要跌嘅話，應該係佢跌先。要升都係佢升先啦，所以佢係個因。而個果係乜嘢呢？就係、是、個徑步嘅直徑啦。兩者嘅關係就係蒸騰速率下降，容易令到徑步嘅直徑增加；又或者蒸騰嘅速率上升，容易就令到徑步嘅直徑減少啦。然後去到 Part B 啦。已知道咧，徑步嘅直徑嘅變化同埋木質導管嘅直徑嘅係有關係嘅，咁呢個就係因果關係啊嘛，係咪？原來我哋就先去研究下失水多與少、快與慢，而再理解徑步嘅直徑究竟係長定係短啦。而題目就要我哋參考水分沿住徑步轉運嘅方法，去解釋翻喺 Part A 去描述蒸騰嘅速率同埋徑步直徑之間嘅關係啦。嗱，頭先咧就係描述嘅啫。而家呢，就去到解釋咯，點解佢係因果關係呢？除咗用幅圖去理解之外，今次就要利用水嘅轉運去理解。咁究竟水係點樣轉運㗎？自不然就係蒸騰牽引力啦。棵植物先失水。後吸水，而啲水嘅分子咧就會從住呢個木質導管咧就會向上俾人拉上去，呢、這個就係蒸騰牽引力啦。而成條題目啦，我哋就講翻蒸騰速率同埋呢個徑步直徑嘅因果關係啦，然後啦再解釋呢一個關係啦。但係題目今次唔係要你用圖表啊嘛，俾翻呢一個木質導管嘅圖體啦。黑色咧呢度框住嘅呢個位置就係木質嘅導管啦。而中間運載住嘅當然係水分子啦。而而家當啲水分子係經過蒸騰牽引力向上拉嘅時候，咁啊水分子與水分子之間咧，其實佢哋都係有一個牽引力去楞住對方，所以就可以成串水嘅珠珠咧就向上拉嘅。而個水分子同我哋嘅木質導管嘅壁咧，其實都有一個附著嘅力嘅，黏住黏住嘅力嘅。咁所以啦。当个力系向上拉嘅时候，其实嗰啲水分子将个木质导管就向内咧去拉扯嘅，当一粒嘅水分子拉动另一粒嘅水分子，呢、这个水分子嘅拉力都会拉扯到去个木质导管嘅内表面嘅，而呢个力咧系会随住蒸腾速率而增加。從而就去拉扯住木質導管嘅內表面，就向內拉，向入面拉。從而啦，就會將木質導管嘅直徑減少。從而啦，亦都會將個徑步嘅直徑，亦都會減少咗啦。好，跟住啦，去到帕斯啦，非常直白嘅題目啦，描述同埋解釋翻木質導管作為轉運水分嘅構造，兩個嘅適應性特徵。呢條題目簡單到爆炸，就係、是、考翻我哋適應性特徵究竟係咩意思？就係、是、一個結構，佢有一個特徵，而呢個特徵係可以幫助到佢去進行某一個功能，進行得零舍好啊！前有段片就教大家概念整合當中嘅 F F 温書大法，第一個 F feature， 第二個 F function。我話呢啲題目會問你啦，啲嘅功能咧就係水分嘅轉運。咁所以啦，留意下喎，題目唔係問緊你支撐喎，所以你話啦啊咩呢？即使佢有一個好硬嘅細胞壁呢，你都唔係走去講佢支撐喎。咁又嚟睇下私有英教喎。首先木質導管有咩嘅特徵先？哦，首先啦，佢係空心嘅，同埋佢細胞壁呢係加厚咗嘅，木質化咗嘅。咁講完兩個特徵啦。咁同木質導管運送水分有咩嘅關係先？就係、是、允許到水分流通嘅時候呢，阻力係低一啲。
，又或者令到木质导管可以抵御到因为蒸腾牵引力所导致到嘅负压。从而去避免木质导管嘅塌陷，所以当我哋每次答适应性特征嘅题目咧，你都要分得清究竟今次问紧你嘅系咩嘅功能，从而你就系翻呢个结构揾翻相应嘅特征去作为一个适应嘅解释啦。第二十四，好又嚟到一点出发啦。今次嘅题目咧就揾科学探究，考我哋嘅咧就系诠释技能啦，点样去阅读个图表啦，然后啦再考我哋嘅咧就系蒸腾作用同埋维管组织啦。先讲维管组织啦，今次就问木质导管，下次问埋韧皮导管得唔得啦？梗系可以啦，当中又系问翻啦功能啦、适应性特征啦，过往都有 M C 长题目咧都问过大家噶啦。跟住去到蒸腾作用啦，咁啊记紧啦个因果关系咯，先失水而后吸水。蒸腾作用呢一课咧有关于因果关系咧，仲有气泡蒸腾计。气泡蒸腾计当初就系想帮我哋去研究一棵植物失水嘅速度有几快，然而。氣泡蒸腾计其实佢真正量度紧嘅，原来只系吸水嘅速度。咁我哋点样将吸水嘅速度都变成失水嘅速度呢？当中有啲咩嘅假设呢？咁啊，记住睇下片温翻书咯。Two one nine question ten is about transpiration. The graph shows the changes in the rate of transpiration and the change in the stem diameter of the plant over twenty four hours. So there are two y axes. The y axis. Is the transpiration rate? You can see this line, and the dotted line. It is the diameter of the stem. So you can see this y axis. And for part A, describe the relationship between the rate of transpiration and the stem diameter. This question is checking us the critical skills for the graph reading, and then we need to observe the time lagging of the graphs, and then we need to observe the time lagging of the curves. And then for the concept checking, we need to draw the conclusion that what is the relationship between these two factors? One is the cause, and which one is the effect? And that's why we need to observe the graph which factor changes first and which factor follows. We can see from the graph the rate of transpiration it changes first because it goes to the trough first, and then for the diameter of the stem goes to the peak later. Therefore, when you present your answer, you need to say that. Because the rate of transpiration increases, therefore the diameter of the stem decreases. Or you can say that the diameter of the stem increases because the rate of the transpiration decreases. You can see the cause and effect relationship by reading the graph. So, so that's the technique I teach you before to cut the curve. Level part B. It's known that the change in the stem diameter is related to the diameter of the xylem vessels. With the reference to the way in which water is transported along the stem, explain the relationship between the rate of transpiration and the stem diameter described in Part A. So you can see that for Part A, it's about this right. Part A, the question asks you to describe, and for Part B, it asks you to explain. So for this question, surely is checking us the concept of the mechanism of water transport, which is the transpiration pool. And then we need to talk about the scaffolding. So for the scaffolding, we need to talk about the relationship between the rate of transpiration, which is the cause, and then the stem diameter, which is the effect. And then we need to explain the relationship. And also we need to talk about the diameter of the xylem vessels. So I show you this diagram first. This tube, it is the xylem vessels, and there are the water molecules. So first of all, how can the water be transported? The water is transported up the stem by transpiration pool or pulling force or the suction force or the negative pressure, and this pulling force will increase with the transpiration rate. So you can imagine that these water molecules, when this one is pulled up, and it will also pull up another water molecules because there are bonding between them, and then when the water molecules they would like to move up. It will also move or pull the xylem vessel wall inwards, and therefore it will reduce the diameter of the xylem as well as that of the stem. Part C, a very straightforward question. Describe and explain two adaptive features of the xylem vessel as a structure for water transport. So surely is checking us the concept about the adaptive features. How can the structure function well? For that, I show you a video about the network studying method. I call it FF studying method. The first F feature and the second F function. And this time the function is about the water transport. So read the question carefully. It's not about the 
support. So first of all, we need to state the features of the Asylum Vessel. They are hollow tool and the cell wall is thickened or net in fine. So how these features help in water transport? Hollow tube allow the passage of water with lower resistance and the thickened or lignin fine wall to withstand the negative pressure of the transmission pool to prevent the collapse of the asylum vessels. So let's talk about the curriculum mapping. This question starts from the scientific investigation and it checks us the cyanotic skills and there are two concepts we are checking. One is the transpiration and the other one is the vascular tissues. So for the vascular tissues, apart from the asylum vessel, we also have the foreign vessels. So after we talk about the structure, we also talk about the function and the adaptive features and there are several MCs for revision and for the transpiration surely we talk about the water loss and then the water gain or the water absorption there is also a cause and effect relationship water loss is the cause and the water absorption is the effect in the chapter of transpiration potometer is also a way for us to study the cause and effect for example, the bubble potometer. We use it to check, to measure the rate of the transpiration. However, bubble potometer is really checking, measuring the rate of water absorption, water uptake. So how can we make the water uptake equals to the water loss? Any assumption we need to make for this bubble potometer. So you can watch this video to learn the concept again.